Okay. We are still um, a day away from Good Friday. Um, I believe that each and every one of us has been reflecting a lot on what uh, this week means. And um, we've been looking, I mean, from about two, three weeks ago at events that led to, uh, to his crucifixion. And for me, it's, um, it's a lesson, it's one lesson that we're learning from all this, how much it cost him for you to sit here and for me to stand here. We're looking at the fact that God didn't just drop him from heaven to the cross. But he went through a process. And in our lives, as we live for him, as we walk with him, we will also go through a process. So many other things that in that process we will encounter. And what the Lord is doing with us is reminding us of what his son had to go through. And as we are reminded of that, we look at our own selves and look at what we are going through. And remember that all those that he went through, though painful and difficult, ended in a good place. Hallelujah. Not only for himself, but for us as well. So whatever we are doing in life, we will go through certain things as Christians and as we go through these things, they prepare us even for much, um, how do I say it, much difficult task ahead. If, if you go through a process, um, sometimes, I mean, when you are probably, uh, let's say when you are solving a puzzle um, or when you are playing a game, a video game or something, the as you progress, when you start, you start at, at a lower level. But as you progress, you realize that the challenges that come are much more difficult until you get to the end. Amen. Amen. It's the same in life. Um, as we progress in life, things, I mean, challenges that come to us are much more difficult than when we started. So when we start, we start at a certain level but as we progress, then because of uh, the growth and because of uh, whatever, I mean, as we, we go through whatever we're going through, it hardens us, it strengthens us. So as we are strengthened, we are strengthened to be able to face even bigger challenges and overcome those challenges. Amen. So it, it's kind of not rosy all the time. Amen. You may be here tonight and you may have probably been looking at your life and been saying that, why me? Why is it that I am going through all this? And I want you to really understand. I don't know who you are, but I want you to really understand that every challenge that comes your way, depending on how you look at the challenge and how you uh, uh, I mean, embrace the challenge and uh, work out that challenge and overcome that challenge. Depending on how you do it, you will come out stronger or you will come out weaker. I, I don't know if you understood. Let me repeat it. If you go through challenges, as we go through life, we go through challenges all the time. But when you face a challenge... How you handle the challenge, how you go through the challenge, how you embrace, how you hold on to the challenge and work at that challenge to overcome that challenge will determine how the whole thing, whether you're going to be stronger or weaker. If you handle it well, if you face it and you see it as a challenge that you need to overcome, you will overcome it and you'll be a better person because you'll be much more stronger to face even further challenges that will come. But if you look at a challenge, oh my God, I mean, why me? 
why is it that me, oh, oh, I'm always going through this and I'm always going through that. This one too has come to really destroy me. It will destroy you. Hallelujah. I said it will do what? But if you look at the challenge, you said, yesterday I I overcame that one. Today I will overcome this challenge. It doesn't matter how tough, how difficult it is, I will overcome. So you uh, embrace that challenge with a positive mindset. You embrace that challenge and you remind the challenge that even Jesus, I mean, the one that I follow went through challenges, but on the cross, he overcame every challenge. And because of that, I can overcome every challenge. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what comes your way. I said it does not matter. It could be in any sphere of your life, in any area of your life. My, I mean, look, some of the, ch- don't look at me like I don't go through anything. I go through my own challenges. I go through things that are very, very challenging. But the point is that, how do I really handle it? Sometimes, Look, sometimes preachers, by the, by the time they will, get from, uh, they, will, they will leave home and come to church and stand on the pulpit to preach, you have no idea what they have gone through. Hallelujah. But as we face that challenge and we tell that challenge that you cannot really bring me down. Hallelujah. And we rise up. To what we've been called to do. God gives us the grace. And as he gives you the grace to preach. By the time you finish preaching. He would have given you the grace. To overcome everything. Hallelujah. Not only do I. We preach to you to be free. We become free as well. Hallelujah. So we need to really understand. That life is full of challenges. Hallelujah. And. Looking at Jesus, he went through a lot of them. He went through a lot of them. So we've been looking at events leading to crucifixion. Last week, uh, we looked at uh, he being denied, betrayed. Uh, I mean, the the worst part is uh, people that he confided in. Because he had 12 disciples, he didn't tell all of them that his... uh, uh, our soul is troubled to the extent of that. He didn't. He told only the three. When he separated them, he told them, thinking that the three were going to really stand by him. They slept. Hallelujah. Amen. When sometimes somebody needs... You see, <laughs> pray that somebody will help you in prayer. Amen. But pray that you also know how to pray. Because sometimes people that you expect to really supports you in prayer, they are sleeping. Hallelujah. I said they are doing what? They are sleeping. So if you don't know how to pray, if Jesus didn't know how to pray and was depending on these guys, what do you think would have happened? Hallelujah. So we need to really learn to pray ourselves. In as much as we can have people to pray for us, and I, I support that 100%, it is always good to have prayer partners. It's always good to have people that can support you in prayer. I love to pray. I love to pray for people. Uh, probably some, I, I think I pray for people more than myself. So, I mean, I love to pray. Amen. Um, my wife's even pray much more than I do. Hallelujah. But the truth is that there are times that everyone is tired. So maybe that is the time that you were expecting that somebody will pray for you. That was the time the person is tired. Hallelujah. So it was a, it was a sad situation. Jesus looked at them. They were, listen, <laughs> there are two times in the Bible that I believe Jesus looked at his disciples and said, what is wrong with these guys? One was on this occasion, he came and they, they were sleeping. When he came back again, they were sleeping. He said, these guys, there's something wrong with them. The other time was, I think, when he looked at Peter. The Bible says he turned around and looked at him. I told you so. <laughs> Hallelujah. When he denied him. I mean, Bible says Jesus turned around 
and looked straight at him. Hallelujah. Jesus, he has some eye. Don't let Jesus look at you with that eye. Amen. He looks at people with that eye only when there is trouble. Hallelujah. But tonight, tonight we're going to look at certain events that happened, uh, I would say, a day before he was crucified. Amen. And it's, it's kind of tough and difficult for me sometimes when I'm going through these things. Uh, they are always fresh in my spirit because I ask one question all the time. What did I do to deserve this? That he would go through this for my sake. What did I do? What, what good did I do? What, what, I mean, what did I do to deserve this? That someone will go through this pain and suffering for my sake. What did I do? Hallelujah. I want you to ask yourself, as we go through tonight, what we're going to go through. And so tonight, we're going to look at <laughs> mocked, rejected and exchanged for a criminal. And condemned for his identity. Jesus was condemned for who he is. Hallelujah. Mocked, rejected, and exchanged for a criminal, and condemned for his identity. He was mocked. He was rejected. Not only did they reject him, but they exchanged him for a criminal. And finally, he was condemned for his identity. Hallelujah. And in that condemnation, he was really given the 40 minus 1 lashes. And Sometimes it's difficult to really go through this all over again. But we ought to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, I want you to understand tonight that Jesus, Jesus, was innocent of anything they said of him. Whatever they said about him, whatever they, they whatever uh, um, charge that was brought up against him, he was innocent. And the one who betrayed him in Matthew chapter 27, verses 3 and 4, the one who really took him and sold him, betrayed him, said, when Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and the elders. And what did he say? I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. Hallelujah. I have done what? I have betrayed innocent blood. Listen to me. I don't care what anybody wants to say about my Jesus. Hallelujah. But they can prefer every kind of charge against him. But for me, the one who betrayed him says that he's not guilty of anything. He says that I betrayed innocent blood. Hallelujah. So, no matter how the judges try to really find reason to kill him, condemn him, do whatever they want to do to him, the one who betrayed him, the one who gave them what they needed to stand on to really do what they did, the evidence is false. Hallelujah. Because the one 
who really sold him, who betrayed him, says that he is innocent. So everything that I said was a lie. And for that alone gives me joy in my spirit that my sins has been forgiven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because that is how he took my sins. He died not because of his sin, but of my sin. Hallelujah. You probably may be too good. Maybe you don't have any sin. But I have a lot that he took to the cross on my behalf. Amen. 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 So let's go straight into the mockery. The mockery. You see, I... Just imagine people that you know, hallelujah, and you know who you are, you know who they are, and you know that, I mean, <laughs> the difference between you and them is so huge, but then they, they get an opportunity to mock you. And they are mocking you. And you know you have the power to do whatever you want to do or whatever. I mean, you have the power to do so many things. You have the power even to cause their debt. You have the power to shut their mouth. You have the power to do anything you want to do. But yet, they are mocking you. And you look on. You see, I want us to understand that what he had to go through for us to be who we are you will not go through that for anyone. Not even for your mother. Hallelujah. How many times have people mocked you and you have risen and uh, said all kinds of things? Who do you think you are? Do you know me? How many times? How many times have you sat in a trotro and for the mate to mess you up and you just look at the mate and even if you don't say it with your mouth, in your mind, you are saying, Hallelujah. Has it happened to you before? Hallelujah. You look at somebody really making fun of you, and you look at the person and you ask yourself, Hallelujah. Luke chapter 27, uh, sorry, 22. 63 to 65. And you see, the worst part is that he was mocked on two occasions on the same night. On two occasions, they mocked him. They made fun of him. And they were all guards. But one was the governor's soldiers and the other group was the guards at the Sanhedrin, the council. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. Now watch it. At this time, watch it closely. At this time, Jesus had not been sent to Pilate. So at this time, Jesus was still with the elders, the leaders of uh, the temple, the Sanhedrin, the council. So at this time... We are not, I mean, the, the soldiers of the governor had not come into the picture at all. So, the men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and demanded, prophesy who hit you. Hallelujah. And they said many other insulting things to him. Now, just, you see, that's why, why didn't they do this to uh, 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 um, uh, Elijah? Elijah. What do you think would have happened? Hallelujah. So you see the difference between Elijah and Jesus. If this has been done to Elijah, what do you think would have happened? When Jesus was traveling with his disciples and some people said they wouldn't let them pass through their town, what did they say? Jesus, do you know what? We can call fire now. The one who has the fire didn't say, I'm calling fire. But the people who have been trained, in fact, they were under training. They want to call fire. Hallelujah. You see, I, I, he is the prince of peace, I tell you. He is the prince of peace. Not he was. He's still the prince of peace. 
Because if you look at what was done to him, now, why, was, why were these people, and watch it closely, these people, they were guards of the Sanhedrin, so they knew what they were doing. So watch it. They said, prophesy. The soldiers of the um, governor don't know about prophecy. These ones know the word of God. These ones have read the Torah. These ones are close to the Sanhedrin. They know what is right and they know what is wrong. Hallelujah. And you expect them to do better. Now, they are joking with prophecy. They are joking with the things that should be cherished. Hallelujah. How many times do we joke with prophecy and we joke with things around? Now they are asking him, hey, you prophesy to us. So now, pe- oh my goodness, people, people, and, and let us not fall for their trap. Sometimes it's mere mockery. Hallelujah. Jesus knew what they were doing. Hallelujah. Sometimes people will come and just do this for me, do this for me. Beloved, let's discern. I agree that people have needs and people, but we also need to let people understand that we don't give the pearls to pigs. Hallelujah. If you give something that is precious to a pig, what would he do to it? He would just... Because... When, when, <laughs> have you ever seen a pig with a gold necklace around the neck? So if you give a pig a gold necklace, what is he going to do with it? He doesn't know the value. He doesn't know. He doesn't care about it. And what is he going to do? He's going to just trample uh, it underfoot and destroy it. Hallelujah. Something probably that you would have bought with thousands of CDs, he's going to really destroy it in a minute. Because It has no value to him or to that pig. Amen. So we need to understand that there are times Jesus, even in his pain, even in in his difficult moments, was teaching us something. I want you to remember, he's going through all this mockery for the sake of you and me. Because he could have said one word. Because not too long ago, they they arrested him and they brought him. Now, when they were arresting him, the moment, when they, I mean, uh, he asked them, who do you want? Uh, When they said they wanted him and he said, here I am, what happened? They all fell down. Now, if that is, if he has that kind of power, who could have really bound him? Who could have really sent him to the cross? Hallelujah. 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 So they blindfolded him and they began to mock him. Yet, he did not say a word. Why was he going through all this? Who are we to deserve this? For him to really suffer like this for us. He just didn't drop from heaven to the cross. He had to go through this humiliation. He had to go through this kind of humiliation. And he was the most popular preacher at the time. Amen. True or false? So let's get one of the popular preachers to be mocked in this way. And let's ask ourselves what would happen. I said Elijah, when they tried to mess him up, in fact, because Elisha followed Elijah, when they tried to mess Elisha up as well, what happened? He called what? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't joke with them. But now, they're doing that to Jesus and he's sitting down, he's watching. They blindfolded him. 
You don't need to blindfold Jesus. Hallelujah. You can take him 100 uh, uh, yards or 100 miles away, yet he will be able to tell you what is going on. So he, he doesn't need to be blindfolded. Yet they tie his eyes up and they ask him, prophesy. Somebody will slap and will say that, yeah, tell us who slapped you. You said you know all things. Who slapped you? For your sake and for my sake. They're doing all kinds of things to him. And he could have reacted. But he remembers your name. And he says, yeah. If I do anything and I don't go, the day cannot get to heaven. George cannot get to heaven. I mean, how can I save them if I don't go through this process? He mentions your name. He remembers you and he says, wow, no matter what I'm going through, I'm doing this for the sake of the people. I have to go through it. I have to suffer. He was mocked. They made fun of him. They looked at him and they would slap him. He suffered. He went through pain. Great pain. Yet, he endured it. He could have reacted like any other human being. He could have said, this is too much. Yet, he didn't. You know, anytime you do anything, anytime you do any sinful act, anything that will hurt him, ask yourself, how is he feeling now? Ask yourself. Because what he had to go through for you to sit here, for me to stand here, is so huge. But, beloved, we seem to forget all the time. We seem to forget. We seem to forget what he did for us to be who we are today. We seem not to think about it. We think salvation is just what we said. But in fact, before you could say whatever you said, to gain your salvation, it cost somebody his blood, his life. That is the one thing you need to understand. Let us not come to this point and look at the empty tomb, look at the cross, and carry our burdens to the cross without really reminding ourselves of the fact that that cross became a point where we could carry our burdens to because somebody was ready to be hanged there. And it cost him his life for me to carry that burden. And he expects that I would live my life to honor him. He expects that as I get associated with his name, he expects me to live a life that will bring him glory. Beloved in the Lord, it's, it's, it's sad for us to look at Jesus and look at grace and abuse it. You see, we've watered down things to the extent that we think that sin doesn't cost anybody anything. And we have the audacity to say that it's my body. It's my life. What has that got to do with you? It's got everything to do with my Savior. Because for, for you and for me to come to that point where we think we are saved, 
he had to suffer this kind of this kind of uh, humiliation by people that under normal circumstances cannot stand in front of him they humiliated him they said all kinds of things against him Matthew 27 27 to 31 Anytime you are committing any sin, remember what he had to go through. Now, the first was the guards at the Sanhedrin. This time, the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and guarded the whole company of soldiers around him. Now, I mean, it's I don't, I don't know whether you get it. I don't know whether you understand it. My prayer is that Jesus would open our, the eyes of our understanding to understand what we're going through, what we're looking at tonight. These soldiers who do not care about anything. Now, the painful part of Christianity is people inside. People you call your brothers and sisters when they sell you. They sold Jesus for nothing. Judah sold him for 30 pieces of silver. Now these guys, you know, if you read the account, I think in Luke, where he talks about the fact that now between Herod and Pilate, two people that do not even, I don't think they talk, but they became friends. Hallelujah. Why? And you, you, if you read the account very well, what, uh, what, what um, uh, Herod said was so painful to me when I read it or any time I read it. It's so painful. Why is it so painful? Because he thinks Jesus is a showman. So the Bible says that when they told him that they are bringing him, he was so excited. Why? He was excited because, yeah, I mean, this guy, I've never had the opportunity to meet him. I, in fact, I want him to come and show me some miracles. And now, listen carefully to what Herod was saying. What does it mean? It means that he was looking at him from afar, but never had access to Jesus. Couldn't have access to Jesus. He was a big man. He was another governor in another place. But he had no access. It was only when the church sold him. It was only when the leaders of the church betrayed him. Gave him up. Then the world took advantage. And would say anything they want to say. You see, it is us in the church who destroy the church. We. Hallelujah. Okay. And gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, king of the Jews, they said. They spit on him. And this was early morning. Because, you know, they took him in the evening. They've really gone through this kind of, uh, um, how do you call it, uh, um, trial throughout the night. In the morning, uh, when they handed him over to the soldiers. So you can imagine when people had just woke up. Okay, what comes out of their mouth? That's really nice. So they spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Beloved in the Lord, 
Go to 30, 30. Go back one step. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. Beloved in the Lord, I want you to look at something here. Before they spat on him and they struck him on the head again and again, they had put a crown of thorns on his head. And it is said that when it was pressed into his head, because they didn't just put it like this, they pressed it in. And as they pressed it, the thorns went into his skull. And he, you see? And then he began to bled all over. Hallelujah. He's pressing it in. And as he pressed it in, blood was flowing. But he had already been beaten. He's been already flogged. 39 lashes. And if you read commentary, it said that what uh, at the edge or, or at the tips of the cord were small pieces of bones and metals. And as it goes into the body, it just takes out part of the body. So, they beat him to the extent that you could see his inside. I mean, like, part of uh, whatever was inside of him because they've taken part of their skin away. Now, my question again, what did he do to go through this? And what did I do for him to go through this on my behalf? And if this is what he went through to buy me or to pay for my freedom, then I don't need to put him through this again. The problem is we haven't understood it well. And that is why we look at our sons and we say, oh, wake it away, they say, oh, as for this one, it cost him his life to deliver you from us, or as, as for this one. It cost him something. You see, sometimes when you don't know, when somebody gives you a gift and you don't know the value of the gift, you probably do not really handle it properly. Sometimes you don't know what someone had gone through to be able to earn what is in his hand to give to you. So sometimes people will say that, well, wake it to a way. Wake it to a way. You don't have an idea how the person really earned what he earned to provide what he provided for you. Hallelujah. And many times, we don't know, we don't understand what Jesus had to go through for me and you to be where we are. Tonight is a night where I want you to reflect a lot. I just want you to, you see, when you, anytime you say the things you say, anytime you take Christianity for granted, anytime you take your salvation for granted, remember that it cost him something. You will, I mean, just get it, get, just get this right. You and me, we will not have done what he did for us, for ourselves. Why are you saying that? I'm saying that because if you would have done that for yourself, you wouldn't joke with your salvation. We joke with it every day. 
We know we don't know when Jesus is coming, but we behave as if we know. And we behave as if Jesus is not even coming again. But, but if you know that Jesus can come tonight, you will not want to send today. Hallelujah. If you knew that Jesus was coming tonight, will you send? Will you do anything that will take you away from him? Hallelujah. If you knew, so it means that, you know, you see, we, we look at ourselves and we joke with what we have. But he's coming. He's coming. He wouldn't go through this for nothing. He will not go through this for nothing. He knows what will happen. And he said, this process that I'm going through is tough and painful. And Jesus, being Jesus, will say that my soul is troubled to the extent of death. I mean, look at Jesus saying these words and ask yourself, that do I really deserve that he goes through this for my sake? Ask. Let us ask ourselves. Because Easter comes and goes. And we look at it like nothing has happened. We look at it like it's another time to celebrate and enjoy life. So Christians, even though it is a time to reflect and remember what he did for us, we're still thinking about the beach. We're still thinking about fornication and adultery and drinking, getting drunk. and We're thinking about the world more than the one who saved us from the world. Every plan that we are making, we, we don't even put Jesus in the picture. We don't sit down to reflect on what, have I been really doing what he wants me to do? He saved my life. It cost him his life. But how am I living my life? How? Bible says that because of what he did for you and for me, let us honor him with our bodies. Now, my question is, do you honor him with your body? That's what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. And we play around with our bodies and we say, it's for me. Sure? You think it belongs to you? Someone's blood had to be shed. Someone's blood had to be shed. For you to be where you are. For you to have that kind of freedom to say the things you say. It's time to think. It's time to reflect. We are not Christians because we are nice people. We are not Christians because we can speak or we can just really walk around or we can come to church. We are Christians because he had to die. He had to go through this process. All the Lord wants us to do is to understand that what is in our hands, what we have today that we call salvation, It cost him his only begotten son. 
and it cost his son his life. And the reason he wants us to look at the events, even when he was doing good, they were planning evil against him. Even when he was doing good, when he raised, uh, raised Lazarus from the dead, they went to report him. Every step that he took to bless the people, when he healed people on the Sabbath, they were angry. When he saw somebody who had been dead and he raised the person, the mother was, Bible says that when they, the, that boy was being carried away, this widow who had lost her husband and now the only son he, she had was dead and they were going to bury. Jesus looked at the woman, looked at the, the, the uh, is it called the buyer? It's, uh, they didn't call it coffin. Uh, I think it's uh, something that they used to put people on to go and bury, bury them. And as Jesus looked at that, he stopped them. And he called the boy back to life for the mother. He did all that. Yet they wouldn't remember any of that. They just were bent on destroying him. But he had to go through it for you and for me. Hallelujah. So he was mocked by these people. They pressed that crown into his skull, saw the blood coming, looked at him and insulted him and spat on him. Beloved, if somebody spits on your foot, how would you feel? Let alone in your face. Early morning. And the truth is that who are you and who am I? We are nothing. He is the king of kings. He is the author of life. What is it that he couldn't do? Yet he stands there and somebody is spitting in his face and he has every power to stop it. But he said, I can't. Because if I stop him, George will die in his sins. And you will also die in your sins. Who would save us if he had not stood in our place? What would have happened to us if he had not? You see, any sacrifice that you have to make, you have to make that sacrifice boldly. Because he had to make a sacrifice. You see, Christianity is all about sacrifices that we make every day. Because, you see, sometimes when you are doing something, you are complaining, you feel, I don't have to do this, you feel this, you feel that. But I want you to remember that he sacrificed his life for you. And Bible says that in your struggle against sin, you have not yet suffered to the extent of shedding your blood. So we need to really understand that this life is going to be full of sacrifices. Coming to church will be a sacrifice. It will not be out of your convenience. Stopping, you see, going through a difficulty and a challenge and yet still standing for Jesus is a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Because if you would listen to what you're going to go through, you're not going to do that, make that sacrifice. Sometimes we are all tired, but we still have to make it. Hallelujah. Sometimes we are all tired, but we still have to pray. Because we need to stand in the gap for someone. Sometimes you, are, you don't feel like even reading the Bible, but you have to read. Because you need wisdom. You need the knowledge of God to be able to walk in this life. Thy word is what? And What? How can I walk in that? Because sometimes it's difficult, it's challenging for you to take the Bible and read. But you remember that if this is a light, a, a lamp onto my feet and a light onto my path, then if I don't have it, I'm walking in darkness. 
So I need to make the sacrifice to re- You know why many of us are walking in, and when he talks about darkness, he's not talking about the fact that uh, the lights are off and you are walking. No, because it is only the word of God that brings light into this dark world. Because there are so many dark things that we go through. There are so many difficult things that how would you know this is a sin? How would you know the Holy Spirit doesn't want you to do, doesn't want you to do this or that if you don't know the word? Because we are kept in darkness. It's the light of the word that shineth on our part for us to see that which is right and which is wrong. Else you walk in darkness. Hallelujah. So many of us, because we don't have the word inside of us, we are walking in darkness. It is not because the light is off, no. It is because this world itself is full of darkness and it needs light. And he has given us the light that will shine in our way so we can walk right. Amen. Okay. Now, he was rejected by his own. He was rejected by his own. Number one, he was mocked. Number two, he was rejected. Not only was he rejected, he was rejected and exchanged. They rejected him and exchanged him for a criminal. Hallelujah. Let's read from Matthew chapter 27, 15 to 26 quickly. Now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So we have Jesus Christ and we have Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you? Remember, not too long ago, he walked. Or he rode on a colt into Jerusalem. And they said, Hosanna. Hail the king. Hallelujah. They said it. The same crowd had gathered again. Now, which one do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah. For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man. Hallelujah. Not only was his betrayer, uh, um, uh, uh, not only did his betrayer say he was innocent, but now the Holy Spirit is confirming it through a hidden person. Hallelujah. That this guy is innocent. For I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which one of the two do you want me to release to you? Asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus who is called the Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. Why? Why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an opera was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, his blood is on us and on our children. His blood is on. His blood is on. And our children. 26. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Go to 23. Why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. How can you go to court? And as a, um, as a plaintiff, when they ask you, what has this man done that you brought him here? You say, crucify him. You don't even have any case. And the judge sits down. You see, 
this is, this is uh, I would say, justice betrayed. Because, you see, what is happening is that you take me to court and you don't have a charge against me. And we'll see one, one charge that they preferred against him and you will laugh. And it, 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 <laughs> the people that you expect to support you, the people that you are saving, let the Sanhedrin do what they want to do. But you guys, I have been with you. I have walked with you. I have lived with you. I have healed your sake. I have cast out your demons. I have really blessed you and helped you. And look at the way you're treating me. Weren't they the ones that said, that, that would put their kids on the, on the side of the road? Weren't they the people who would just try that? Oh, all that you need to do is uh, touch his, uh, the, uh, uh, the hem of his garment. Would, weren't they the people that he fed, the 5,000 that he fed? So what has he done for them now to turn around to say crucify him? Hallelujah. Listen, if you are a minister of the gospel, I mean, I know many, many of us sitting here, we've prayed for people and they've been healed. We've done, I mean, God has used us to really bless people many, many times. But the same people now turn around and say, crucify him. They turn around and they say, you are a bad person. You are evil. Don't be worried. Hallelujah. Why? He suffered. You fast and pray for someone. And he turns around. Hallelujah. And that same person speaks evil against you. Make it, makes, it, make, makes it look like you are the worst person in the world. And, and it's kind of interesting. You, 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 save, you, you save a dog and the dog bites you. Hallelujah. You, just imagine that. He fed them. Now they said crucify him. He cast out their demons. They said crucify him. They rejected him. The people that were supposed to accept him rejected him. And not only did they reject him, they really exchanged him for a criminal. Now, the judge himself is pleading for the, for, for the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the accused. The judge in the court, he is really pleading. Yet, the accusers say, no way. Who has the power? Who has the power? The judge and the accusers. Who has the power? So how can they now begin to dictate what must happen? That's what this means. You see, on that night, I believe a lot of things were happening. And you see, the point is that what he went through, we go through. But unfortunately, we forget what he went through. And we think we are the only people going through that. And unfortunately, we are unable to stand and we fail all the time. If we can cast our minds back and look at him, and that's why in these three weeks, we've been looking at events leading to the crucifixion. So that you can know and understand that what he had to go through for you to be free, he said if he suffered, you will also suffer, so you will go through it. Don't give up. I said don't give up.
It is sad and hard. Someone who's been condemned now is going to be released. Now, we all know that Jesus was going to go to the cross for us. Or he went to the cross for us. But before he went to the cross, there was a physical exchange to really show us the spiritual exchange that was going to happen. Something happened. Physically, a criminal, a murderer, was exchanged for him. The, the judge, the governor, wanted to set him free. But the people said, exchange his life for this criminal. We don't want this criminal, criminal to die but we want him, Jesus, to die. The one who knew no sin was made sin so that we can become the righteousness of God through him. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 21. He knew no sin. Hallelujah. He's never said anything. 21. He's not done any wrong. Hallelujah. Not 2 Corinthians 5.21. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. He had to be exchanged. The one who knew no sin had to become sin. The righteous had to become sin so that the sinful would become righteous. So, the righteousness that we can boast of is not a righteousness of our own, but a righteousness that we inherited. Hallelujah. It's a righteousness that Jesus really gives to us. It's not what we have done right, but what he did right. So he has changed his righteousness for our sinfulness. Beloved in the Lord, I want us to understand what he did for us. Cost him something. It did cost him something, beloved. It did cost him something. He had to really go through a lot for me and you to be where we are. An exchange happened. And First Peter three eighteen says it beautifully. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. Hallelujah. The first part is so beautiful. Go back again. Let's read it again. <laughs> for, for Christ also suffered once for sins. The, for the, I said the, for the, why to bring us to God. Those of us who were far away were brought near because of what he did. Those of us who did not deserve had the opportunity, not because of what we did right, but because he exchanged his righteousness for our unrighteousness. We are reminding ourselves of the things that he had to go through so that we will begin to cherish the salvation we have. We will begin to look at it differently. We will not really look at it from the way we've looked at it in the past. Easter is a period that we remind ourselves of what he did for us to be where we are. Hallelujah. 
He was betrayed. He was denied. And he was, the people that he wanted to pray with, they led him down in prayer. But not only that, we see again that he was mocked for our sake. Hallelujah. He was exchanged. Hallelujah. It's so painful for him to go through what he did go through. Hallelujah. I want you to think about it. And finally, he was condemned. John chapter 19, verse 7. The Jewish leaders insisted, we have a law. And according to that law, he must die because he claimed to be the son of God. He must die for the sake. You see, I am Mr. Mweni's son. Hallelujah. Why would anybody have to kill me because I'm his son? Can't I say my father's name? Can't I talk about who, I, 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 who, who gave birth to me? Amen. Isn't he the son of God? Why is it that they were so much afraid to hear that he, he is the son of God? Hallelujah. What did they say? They said, when, when uh, um, uh, uh, Nicodemus came, what did he say? We know, he didn't say, I know. He said, we know. You, that's where you came from. We know your identity, but we are jealous of you. We know your identity, but since you came, we don't have any peace. People don't respect us again because we can't do the miracles you do. When, when the people went to report to him in my, John chapter 11 that Jesus uh, had raised Lazarus from the dead, what did they say? No, this guy is now getting too much people. We have to plan on finishing him. And that was when the pot started to kill him. Hallelujah. Because the things he, he, he does, we can't do them. Does that mean he can't be the son of God? He himself said it. And he didn't say it once. Let's go to John. John. John chapter 10, 30 to 33. We're looking at a, a couple of scriptures and then we, we're going to close very soon. But I want us to pray. I and the Father are... Again, his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him. Why don't they want to hear that? 32. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? Which one? We are not stoning you for any good work. They replied, we like the good work. Do that. But for blasphemy, because you are a mere man, you a mere man claim to be God. Who decides who is the son of God? He came from heaven. Hallelujah. Even his birth was different. Yet these guys won't understand. He said, look, we're not, we're not stoning you for your good works. We like your good works, but don't say that you are the son of God. Hallelujah. We like your good works, but you don't look nice. Hallelujah. We like your good works. We want to be saved. We want to be blessed. I mean, the, you know, the one funny thing in church today is, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> the same God, we pray, God, give us money, but we'll give you money. Hallelujah. The same God, heal us, but we won't save you. Hallelujah. That's what they were saying. Heal us. Deliver us. But don't say you are the son of God. He said, if I'm not the son of God, I can't do what I do. Hallelujah. So if you want me to heal you, you have to accept my identity. I cannot change my... How many of us change our identity because somebody really challenges our identity? 
The devil is challenging our identity every day. Hallelujah. You say you are a son of God. You say you are a child of God. I will attack you for your identity. And you'll be hungry. Hallelujah. How many times do we say, I'm not a son of God again? I'm not a child of God again. Because you didn't open your mouth to say it doesn't mean that you didn't say. You said it by your actions. Hallelujah. Because you gave in to the challenge by submitting to the challenge and really giving up your identity as a child of God. How many of us are saying that nyami beyankwaye? Into we're looking for. You know what? We're saying that God is unable. But we sing God is able, don't we? Yet we say with the other side of our mouth, by our actions, God is unable. Hypocrisy. Hallelujah. Not only did Jesus himself say who he was or who he is, but the Holy Spirit confirmed. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 3, 13 to 17, and Matthew chapter 17, 4 and 5. Let's read them quickly. Because we are ending. And we will continue tomorrow. Hallelujah. We'll look at from this point when he was condemned, going into um, the cross and dying. Hallelujah. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And the voice from heaven said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Hallelujah. If you don't believe Jesus, believe the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He says he is the son of God. If you are doubting, the Holy Spirit confirms it. Not only once, but on a second occasion, in John chapter 17, 4 and 5, Heavens confirmed it again. Hallelujah. I brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. No, not this one. Matthew. We are reading Matthew. This was when he was praying, but that, that, that's not what I want. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I'll put up three shelters. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them. And a voice from the cloud said, this is my son, whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. Hallelujah. Beloved in the Lord, his identity as the son of God cannot be disputed. Yet these people wanted to kill him for, and they killed him for who he is. And they said it openly. Hallelujah. In 1907, they said it. Hallelujah. They were bold to say it. And they said it. And they said, we have a law. Hallelujah. They said, we do what? Have a law. And the law that we have, uh, based on that law, he has blasphemed by saying that he's the son of God. So he needs to die. He has to die. For his identity. Beloved, let me tell you something. For who you are, you'll be attacked. 
for you being a child of God, the devil will not leave you alone. For you praying to destroy the works of the enemy. Bible says that Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. And for you to destroy the works of the enemy, hallelujah, the enemy will not leave you alone. For who you are, your identity as a child of God, your identity as a, as a, as a daughter of God, as a son of God, you will go through certain crises, not for anything you've done wrong, but for the fact that you are a child of God. You see, we think that being a Christian, you don't go through anything. But for the fact that you are, just for the fact that you are a Christian, there are, it has its own attacks. Just the fact that you are a Christian, just the fact that you call yourself a child of God, you have certain attacks. That will come on you. You don't have to do anything wrong. Hallelujah. I tell people all the time. I said don't cry. Don't worry. It is not because you've done anything wrong. It is because of who you are in the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me tell you. There could be two people in church. One will be free. Nobody. The devil even doesn't want. The devil doesn't even care about the person. Why? Because he does the devil's bidding. Hallelujah. He doesn't, because if the devil says fornicate, he fornicates. He says lie, he lies. He says gossip, he gossips. What does the devil have to do with this one? Hmm? Tell me, will you attack such a person if you are the devil? Or you will do mama? What's my now? I call on the papa, small now. One's watching us. Hallelujah. But when you say, when he says gossip, he says, I won't gossip. Bible says that in John, uh, uh, sorry, James chapter 4 verse 7. He says, submit to the Lord, resist the devil and he will flee from you. When you know that you are a child of God and you begin to submit to God, every submission, every act of submission to God is a resistance to the power of the devil. Every act of submission, every obedience on your part to God means that you have resisted because the, the fact is that the devil always wants you to disobey. So the moment you obey, you have really flouted his laws. And he won't forgive you. He will come after you. So you don't have to do anything wrong. You have to do everything good to have attacks. Hallelujah. Or oh, you don't want to be Christian again. Hallelujah. You, you don't have to do anything wrong. Oh. You have to do everything right for you to be attacked. But the point is that God is with you. Hallelujah. What did Jesus do wrong for him to be attacked? Bible says that he knew no sin. He didn't commit any sin. But he was indeed the son of God. And for the fact that he was a son, they said, because of this, he has to die. He has to die just for the sake of his identity. For the sake of your identity, you will be attacked. The devil will come after you. The devil will try to really destroy you. But the only way you will overcome is when you submit to the Father. Hallelujah. As the devil attacked and really came after Jesus, all that he needed to do was to submit to the Father and die on the cross. Hallelujah. And then he got a reward. Beloved in the Lord, I want you to really stand up tonight. We don't have too much time. But I want you, as you are standing, I want you to understand a couple of things. Many of us have never known who we are and how we got to where we are. Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, we're going to pray. We're going to pray very soon. Just want you to really understand that you are so precious and it cost Jesus his life for you to be where you are. 
For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors. But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He had no blemish. He had no defect. You were not bought with a blemished blood. You were bought and paid for with an unblemished blood. Bible says in Revelation chapter 9, uh, chapter 5 verses 9, chapter 5 verse 9, Revelation 5, 9. Bible says that, and they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You and me from nations that were not counted. We were paid for. We were purchased with the blood of Jesus for God. You are for God today. I am for God today because his blood purchased us from every tribe. From Angona, Dagati, Fante, Aibe, everything, what so many, I mean, uh, uh, Kropo, I mean, from everywhere. The same blood purchased me and purchased you from every tribe and language and people and nation. His blood purchased us. Maybe you don't know your identity as a child of God. Maybe we, you are not too sure. So you've taken it for granted. I want you to understand, for you to stand here tonight and even think about the fact that I'm a child of God. His blood had to be poured. Tonight, the precious blood of Jesus is flowing all over his face because of the crown of thorns that was really pressed into his skull. Beloved in the Lord, as you stand here right now, it doesn't matter what you have done wrong. He has proven to us tonight through his word that even physically he was exchanged. You are in a place tonight where Jesus is ready to exchange his life for yours. He's more than willing to do that. He's more than ready to do that. Yeah, you gave your life to him some time ago. But have you really checked whether you are living for him. I'm not talking about who, are, who said I've given my life to him. I'm talking about those who are living or not living for him. And I want us tonight to make a decision that I didn't understand, but now I understand what he had to go through for me to really say that I'm a child of God. And I'm ready to make all the sacrifices. I'm ready to give my all. I'm ready to press harder. I'm ready to make that sacrifice that I have to make. If you are like that, I just want you to lift up your hand. You are a Christian. 
I agree with you. But are you making the sacrifices that you have to make? Are you able? Just lift up your hands. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. God bless you. 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 He loves you. He cares for you. And he wants to go on this journey with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these beautiful ones. I honor you for their lives. I glorify you for the decision tonight. Not to know you, because they know you already. But to make that sacrifice, to make that decision of sacrificing their all for you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. May you grant them the grace that they need, the strength that they need, the power that they need to do that which you are calling them to do. They've responded to your call, Holy Spirit. I thank you for their lives. And I pray in Jesus' name that you would use them that you give them the strength to carry on and to do what you have called them to do. I bless you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now I want each and every one of us to pray and ask the Lord that Father, may you give me the strength to reflect between now and tomorrow and understand what you did for me. Because without understanding what he did for you, you will never be able to live for him. We need to understand it. We need to know the extent that he had to go for us. We need to know that it cost him his blood. It cost him his life for us to come. For us to be called. For us to stand here tonight. It cost him his blood. So I want you to pray tonight. Father, help me to reflect. Help me to understand so I can give my all to you. Begin to pray. He suffered so we can be free. He became sin so we can become righteous. He became poor so we can become rich. He was flogged for your sake and for my sake. He was spat on for your sake and for my sake. He suffered so I can be free and you can be free.
He was persecuted because of me and you. They did all these bad things to him because of you and because of me. What are we doing? What are we doing for him? Make a commitment to him tonight. Say something to him tonight. What do you want to do? What do you want to do for him? Talk to him tonight. Give your all to him tonight. Submit to him tonight. Call on him tonight. To give you the strength that you need to carry on. Don't let this blood go waste. Don't trample on the foot the blood that saved you and saved me. Let's not trample upon it. Let's cherish that blood. It's precious. So precious. Father, we thank you tonight. Father, these are precious moments when we begin to remind ourselves of the process that Jesus had to go through to pay for our freedom. The pain, the suffering, the humiliation that he had to go through So we can be called Christians. We can be called the children of God. We can call, be called co heirs with Jesus Christ. We can inherit the kingdom. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray tonight. May your word in the name of Jesus continue to echo in our spirit. And may your word help us in the name of Jesus to make the right decisions in life. I pray tonight in Jesus' name. May this word, Father, tonight be imprinted on our hearts. Father, may we have it in our minds every day and every moment. That any time we walk, we will remember what he had to do for us to be where we are. May we never forget, Lord. May we never forget, Lord. May we forever remember. And as we remember, may we live lives that are worthy of his name. Lives that are worthy of his name. May we walk in righteousness. His righteousness that was imputed to us. May we walk in that righteousness. May we live right. May we walk right. May we speak right. May we look right. May we, Father, do the things that you've called us to do. I thank you tonight. Continue to work in us. In Jesus' name. Amen.